Besides, it looks good, bazoomy wise. May I, you know, because I have, it doesn't look for me. Because I have no, no bazooms. This is all padding. But you have, like, you have a nice chest. Your chest. What size are you? About. About. You're about a 34B. Bigger, you tramp. If you're, I'm, oh, oh. I am a 14A and I take a tuck. It is just, because I have no, I don't even wear an A cup. I wear an A saucer. It is, the, the, the only man who can find my chest is Kreskin. It is just so, and, and it's embarrassing. I went for my cancer checkup, you know, and the doctor said, I think I found a lump on your breast. I said, it's my breast. And it, no, because it's, and because of that, I've had very, because you're men, right? Uh, men like chesty women, isn't that true? The truth, yes, which, yeah, it's true. And that's why, because I dated very little in high school. And the ones I dated were like, because I, because nobody liked me. I, da oh, I dated, Ugh, when you look back, a football player, Moose Malinsky. I mean, dumb. We would get in the elevator, he would press the buttons and look for gum. It was just the, you know, the, that. And I dated a guy with breath, because you know, we were all worried, you know, like a, I dated a guy, he had such bad breath. He used to tarnish platinum. I mean, the man, he would say hello, he would start off four smoke alarms. Just that, and I, I dated a transvestite. Is that the pits? And my mother said, marry him, because you can double your wardrobe. It was the, oh, yes! That. And the worst, because looking back, the worst ever, because when you go back and you think, the worst I ever, ever, ever dated was a practical joker. We would go out to dinner one time, he blew his nose in a pancake. I thought I was, oh, truth, truth, truth. And, but, I, but I didn't marry these guys, so ha ha. Because I, no, no, because when you get, because you end up liking you, you're married. My friends, well, you're younger than I am, mm -hmm. but my friends, <laughs> or have had it all cleverly fixed. But my friends dated guys, when you look at what some of your friends dated, I had a friend once dated a guy, a mechanic. I mean, so greasy, we threw the rice, it stuck to him. It was that. <laughs> Another friend dated a guy who was selfish. They brought out the wedding cake. He cut it this way to keep the good part for himself. It was just, and you know why they dated these, these losers? Because in those days, which was in the early 60s, you had to get married. It's all changed now, isn't that true? And th thank God it's all changed. Oh, oh, in those days, there were good girls and bad, double standard, remember that? Which used to kill me. A man could sleep around and sleep around. Nobody asked any questions, am I right? A woman, you made 19, 20 mistakes. Right away, you were a tramp. Was, oh, yes! So unfair! Oh. I had a friend, Heidi Abramowitz. I mean, when I tell you, you talk about, oh, tramp? The girl used chapstick on her thighs. I have never, it was just. of an evening gown was a sheet. I mean, I just can't tell. At the age of 12, she had welcome aboard written on her underwear. It was just, and I met her recently, and you know, and, and she looked, went to a class reunion. She looked exactly the same, a couple of tattoos, you know, but otherwise, she, oh, and I said, hi, Heidi, what are you up to? She said, a hundred bucks. It is just, oh. And you know what, you, you know who the biggest tramps are, by the way? Nurses. Yeah. Oh, grow up. RN stands for ready now. If you don't know that, oh, please. the biggest tramp, don't you think? Oh, Florence Nightingale, what did she do that was so terrific? She followed the army from camp to camp to camp, right? For this, she got a medal. Well, my cousin Sheila also followed the army from camp to camp to camp. You know what she got? A year in jail and eight shots of penicillin. Oh, sure! But, are, are there any nurses here, by the way? Yeah, well, don't, and they, uh, they don't, now, aren't you mean to women the truth? Oh, uh, oh, oh! Your friend is going, yes, you're damn right. Oh, while I was in labor, a nurse short cheated my bed. I have been going, oh, you don't know. While I was in labor, the nurse was in the corner trying on my clothes. If you die, can I have this? And, oh, they took my temperature with a meat thermometer. I mean, these go, oh, nursing to men, they're all over them. Hello, Woody, Woody, Woody. Oh, if you were there, be high, good looking. For a woman? When I had my baby, as a joke, a nurse took a, a, a puppy and wrapped it in a blanket and brought it in. Looks like you. It was, oh, it was terrible. You don't know. And now the 
that we could talk if you're nurses, uh, that I had the baby anyhow was a miracle. Because again, going back to the 50s and 60s, when I, because now everybody knows about birth control, right? My day, my mother told me nothing about birth control. I knew nothing about sex when I got married. All my mother said was man gets on top, woman gets on the bottom. So I bought bunk beds. It was, oh, yes! <laughs> My mother said, on your wedding night, bring along something black and sexy. I took Diana Ross. Well, sure. <laughs> we were sitting there on the bed going, puff, puff, now what? And birth control? Well, what, well, how many, well, I don't know how many of you really know. Well, you're nurses, right? So what's the, rhythm is not that good, do you think? Because the kid will come out tapping. You must be careful. Uh, oh, yes. You know, you know what's very big now in California, birth control-wise? It's crazy glue. Just a little dab, a little dab, and that's it. Uh, and that, yes. Very good. Also, the coil. How many of you are coiled out here? I'd like to show of hands on this. <laughs> what about the women? It is just... The co <laughs> coiled is terrific, because every time you sit on the bed, you bounce right off. And that... But I gave it up, because every time I crossed my leg, the garage door would open. It would... Oh! <laughs> the worst! Except like we're talking about birth control. You know, you, for me, in my case, the biggest birth control is I'd be married 14 years. How long are you married? Ten. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, no, because after a while, nothing happens between my husband and me. I try to arouse him, you know. A friend of mine said, talk dirty, yeah? So last night, well, so I'm lying in bed last night, and I'm going, you know, Edgar, I said, talk dirty to me. He said, how about the bedroom, the bathroom, the living room, the kitchen? Ah, oh, it kills me. And I try, because... I think a woman should try right till death, don't you? I got into bed last night with false eyelashes. I thought that'd be very sexy, right? We woke up this morning, they were lying between us on the pillow. My husband's going, bugs, 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 bugs. Oh. Once, once in six months, he came home in a romantic mood. He had brought a girl with him. And then, oh, yes! If I want to have a hickey, I have to take the vacuum cleaner and go, it is just... Do you know how depressing it is to get up in the... I got up this morning, I looked in the medicine chest mirror, I looked at my face, I went, ah! Then I realized, thank God, the door was open. But, it, oh! No, because the body's got, my body is falling so fast, my gynecologist wears a hard hat. It is just, oh, yes! The worst! The worst! And I said to my husband, because it's not fair, a man could get older, doesn't mean a damn thing. Doesn't that upset you? A woman, you get older, it's all old. I said to my husband, look, women are like wine. Think of us like wine. The older we become, the better we get. He locked me in the cellar. And, uh, oh, yes! And you I bought The Joy of Sex. Have any of you bought that book? Yeah, isn't it a good book? Good, good. Chapter 7, you get completely, you don't remember? You get completely undressed, you wrap yourself up in saran wrap. I laid down on the dining room table. My husband came home, he said, leftovers again. And, uh, oh! You know why? When you're married a few years, it's like they take it for granted. Oh, there's the old pig. And, oh, sure. He's not even, isn't it true? He's not jealous anymore. I, you know what I did? I pretended to have an affair. Did you ever try? I thought that'll get him crazy, right? I'm lying in bed. I'm pretending I'm talking in my sleep. I'm going, no, Tim, it's not right. Next morning, my husband said, tell Tim it's all right. And, oh, sure. It just killed. You want to know the truth? You're a fabulous audience, so I'm going to confide in you like I've never confided in anyone before. Can you take it? We've had sex once in three years, okay? Are you happy now? He was doing push-ups and I slipped in. It was just a mess. said to me over the years, where are the Jack Bennies, where are the W.C. Fields, where are the chaplains? Well, they're dead. And obviously those asses don't read the papers. But if you are looking for great new talent, we've got them all tonight on our show. I want to start out with someone who I'm very pleased to present. They're a comedy team who are in a class with Cher, I'd say, Charo, Liberace, because they have no last names either. They are... <laughs> Darling, adorable, and very, very funny. They won the Entertainment Award for Newcomers in Las Vegas, the fabulous comedy team of Roger and Roger. <laughs>
right here with Joan. Yes, it is. And you have so much comedy on the show, that gives us a chance to pay a serious tribute to some of our favorite musical performers of all time. Beginning with a song that Mickey Rooney wrote for his seventh wife. <laughs> What's your name? Is it Mary or Sue? No, it's Paul, you crazy animal. <laughs> What's your name? Do I stand a chance with you? Oh, no. My heart belongs to Sergeant Carter. <laughs> it's so hard to find a personality with charms like yours for me. Hooey, hooey, hooey. What's your name? What's your name? Ah, uh, you ask one more time, you gonna get one of these right across your lip, dummy. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Shooby doo ba ba da. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here's a man who transcended the last 30 years of music. That's why they called him the king of rock and roll! Screams would help us. Come on, folks, help us out with me screaming. Not you, sir, just the ladies, okay? <laughs> in the 1960s with some sound of soul music and the temptation. means a lot to Roger and I, because last oh, yeah. year we worked right here in Las Vegas with another great Motown star. Yes, we did, Miss Diana Ross. Yeah, she's a wonderful, wonderful lady. And while we were at one hotel with Diana, the other two ladies used to sing with her in the Supremes in the 60s. They were performing, just the two of them, at the very same time at another hotel. Yeah, we got a chance to see them, and they were marvelous. They were great without her. Here they are, the Supremes, without Diana Ross. <laughs> Oh, 
It's a living, folks. They're still in show business. It's a living. It's a beginning. But we have reserved for last probably our favorite singing duo of all time. Boy, the way Glenn Miller plays. So it make a hip Guys like us, we had it made. Joe's way the days. And you knew who you were, Dad! <laughs> guys were guys and man was man. Mr. We could use a man like Herbert Hoover again. Didn't need no welfare stage. Everybody pulled his back. <laughs> oh, jeez, we used to have his everything bad, huh? Abuse, Archie. <laughs> Didn't you want to hear that just one time? <laughs> Gee, I wonder still red rage Joe's way the I started out as a magician's assistant. It's just absolutely true. I worked for a rotten, lousy magician. His name was Mandrake the Mediocre. Oh, okay, pathetic. I mean, Pitts. His only trick was his sister. Does that give you a picture of the act? It was just, oh. And when she went, there went the act. And that's why I am thrilled at this point now to be working with who I think are probably the best magicians alive today in this country, or in the world, actually. My two very dear friends, Siegfried and Roy, the superstars of magic. <laughs> Show. Well, we're glad to be here. Oh, good. Now, tell me, what are you going to do? Are you going to make an elephant disappear, a, a tiger disappear? What are you going to do for me? What? what are you paying us? We are not here to do magic, right? No, no, that's not the deal. Well, then at least let me do some magic, okay? All right. Would you like to see me do a trick? Beautiful. Well, the cue card says yes. Okay. Then you got it. Okay. I have a little bag here, and I have a blue scarf, right? And a red scarf. All you right. with me so far, guys? Right. Yes. Put them both into the bag. Voila! I say a magic word. Siegfried and Roy. Sim Salabim. Okay, <laughs> and you ready? The red scarf is turned to blue, and the blue scarf is turned to red. Voila! <laughs> what do you think, huh? On a second thought, John, we're gonna do some magic. Good. Right. Roy, Goodbye. let's disappear. Right. Oh, no. Oh, come on, please. Oh. You know, give me a break. I'm just trying to be cute. Everybody does magic today, even my gynecologist. Do you know? Yes. Do you know? <laughs> this morning, he pulled what? a hat out of a rabbit. What? <laughs> <laughs> Good, huh? That's what people would like to do. Pull a hat out of a rabbit? No, to do some jokes. Jokes? Yes. Go ahead. You know, Siegfried had an uncle once who was the magician. Yes, and every night when he got home after his work, he turned into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> huh? All right. You have ruined my show. What? You have with that lousy joke. The least you can do to make up is do it magic trick with me. Go, oh, come on. Not for what you're paying us. Look, do the trick. So cruel. Do the trick. And then we'll negotiate, okay? Oh, All right. Good. What okay. do you want to do? What we gonna do with you? We gonna saw you in half. Okay. All right. Saw me in half. Thank you. She's dangerous. <laughs> All right. Oh, and heavy too. Straight now. Straight now. Oh. You made my shoe 
I give you one more chance. Okay. You better straighten it out now. Yeah. All right. Oh, how about 25 bucks and you get to keep my shoes? That does it. That's oh, it. come on. What am I going to do like this? Take it away. What am I going to do? Take open a away. restaurant called John in the Box? You're on your own. You're on your own. <laughs> you can't leave me like this. Will I ever dance again? You're on your own. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, <laughs> seek me and Roy. Yay! Can you do me a favor? Take me back in the dressing room and let me pull myself together. <laughs> Will someone please, please, take me back in the dressing room? And meanwhile, while I'm getting myself back into my one piece, why don't you all enjoy the comedy star of the Follies Bergere, Mr. Barkley Shaw. <laughs> did a whole series of TV specials. They don't give a shit. People don't care about that crap, man. What the, where's the table? Put me down, will you, please? Oh, God damn it, you know I'm with egg? I was with egg, I'm with omelet now. Oh, Joe, knock it off, that damn piano. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I got so much gas, I'm being followed by Arabs. What? <laughs> Introduce me before gangrene sets in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Madam Clara Cluck. Another dead-ass crowd. Oh, You're going against the grain, sweetie. Oh, Jesus, here it comes. Oh, it's gonna drip all over me now. Sweats like an old crow. I know, I had one last night. <laughs> I bet a lot of you guys did too, by the looks on your faces, huh? Some of you brought them with you. <laughs> but it's slow as hell in Nevada for birds, you know. There ain't too much to perch on here. It's a friggin' desert. <laughs> oh, God, my sex life is a joke. I got a choice of crows or buzzards. And you really gotta be horny to go after a buzzard. Oh, you gotta go way the hell out in the desert, lie down and play dead. <laughs> Screws up your whole day. But it beats going home alone and winging it. <laughs> And I gotta get my Beverly Sills stance here in this. <clears throat> Oh, oh, oh. 
God, how do you spell relief? Oh, oh my Lord. You sit there laughing, <laughs> I hope. Oh, you have no idea what we go through. It takes 80 muscles to lay an egg. It only takes 10 to frown, so you can imagine what my ass looks like. I wouldn't want it photographed, you know, except for my driver's license. I've always wanted to show that to a cop. <laughs> And these damn things are 95 cents a dozen now. In Florida, they're a dollar, but I'm not gonna go down there and bust my ass for a nickel. <laughs> what the hell is that? Joan Rivers top trying to find the bottom. <laughs> oh. My God, it's a duck. Now, let me think. I must have been really wiped out. I don't remember a duck at all. And you never forget a duck. They're greasy as hell, you know. You're joking, get the hell out of here. I don't know what to tell my husband, he's a horse. <laughs> Our church is more liberal than yours. Come on, honey, hop on. We're gonna go home and scare daddy. Comes on stoned every night, he'll never know the difference. I didn't miss it by too far, it's got feathers. <laughs> Joe, my dear, my love, do you have an F7 for me? <laughs> Is that the only note you got? Yeah. Are you playing in the black and the white keys? Yeah. I must be singing in the cracks. <laughs> Listen, you've been a hell of a great audience, but we want to warn the ladies, when you leave after the taping, for God's sake, watch it, because I heard naked men are running all over the casino right now. And they're crazy as hell. Anyone can see they're nuts. So if you... <laughs> Trollops. A lot of people think showgirls are cheap. They are not. They're free. It's a, and a lot of people think that I am jealous of showgirls. Again, I am not jealous of showgirls. And you want to know why? Because anybody can be a showgirl. As a matter of fact, anybody can be a star. All you have to know is the tricks. I mean, these days they can make anybody glamorous. Want to see? Thank you. 
used to this. I shouldn't complain. Men never do things to me because I'm not attractive, I, which is true. Men only go after the good-looking women. Isn't that true? If Joan of Arc had had four 48 D cups, believe me, she would never have burned to the stake. <laughs> I mean, the fire would have gone out with drool. And, and that and Susan B. Anthony, was that a piggy? <gasps> oh, do you remember that dollar? She would have gotten, you know, the vote for women a lot earlier if she had a nose fixed. Was it, oh, wasn't she a bow wow? Look how quiet they got. I wouldn't put her in my pocket next to George Washington. I was scared he was going to turn gay. She, oh, yes. She was not pretty. I'm telling you. And if you're not pretty, let me tell you something. You better be rich. The, the richest woman in the, in the world, you know, is Christina Onassis. Have you ever met her? <gasps> oink, oink. Have, oh, Alpo City. Have you ever met her? The first time I met her, I thought she was wearing a fur coat. She was in a strapless dress. I couldn't believe it. She raised her arms, split ends. I, 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 oh, yes. But she's rich. When you're not rich and you're not good looking, let me tell you something. You have to do things for yourself, and which is a story, especially once you're married, which we're back to that. And, and also, because it changes, doesn't it? When I was courting, it was a lot different. I would say to my husband, let's eat out, right? We would go out to a gorgeous restaurant. Now I say, let's eat out. He kicks my dish on the porch. <laughs> Once in 14 years, the man opened the car door for me. We were on the freeway at the time. He just leaves us like, you know. No, but it's true. And I, and I said to him, why are you so rude to me suddenly? Because it does change. And he said, because you, you've let yourself go. You don't look like you looked when we first got married. But I'm not pregnant. It is not my fault. No. Because it all changes, if you know what I'm saying. And actually, considering everything, and considering my age, I am not that bad looking. I mean, I haven't let myself get fat like a lot of friends have. Oh, oh, yes, exactly. My friends, my Elizabeth, uh, this is Elizabeth Taylor's belt. Does that tell you everything? It is just, oh, oh, she screamed. Like it's my fault she's fat. Is it my fault? Did I throw on her back and stuff potatoes in her mouth? Is it my fault? And she is fat. Her thighs are going condo. It is, oh, yes. She has a bumper sticker on her car that says, honk if you got groceries. There's a, oh, sure. Don't you know this? Don't you read the National Enquirer? She is remaking National Velvet, the movie, and she's gonna play the horse. This, oh, yes! This woman has more chins than a Chinese phone book. I mean, it is just... And, don't you love that joke? <laughs> And you know why she's fat? Because she eats. That's, I took her to McDonald's just to watch her eat and watch the numbers change. It was the most of, oh, yes! You have no idea. And she got stuck going out through the arches, and my husband had to butter her thighs, and he pushed, and I stood in front with a Twinkie. Come and get it, lard legs. Oh, sure. This woman is fat. And, and the men don't want to know. You know why? Because she has sex appeal. That's what it comes down to. Either you, have you can be fat and have sex appeal or be skinny and... Isn't it true? It's all sex appeal, which just kills me. Because I have no sex appeal. I don't want to talk about it. I have no sex appeal, all right? If I want to get jumped, I have to call the auto club. And if, oh, yes! You don't know! A lot of men smoke after making love. My husband smokes during. And if, oh! Had the nerve to ask me for a light. I said, get it yourself from the dashboard. I am busy. I mean, I have no sex. Rapists have tapped me on the shoulder, said, seen any girls. It is, oh, the worst. I like, because I get philosophical, right? Because I was a phil philosophy major in college. And I like, to think of, I like to think of my sex life kind of as a piece of Swiss cheese, you know? Most of it's missing, and the part that's there stinks. It is, oh, yes. Isn't that a good thought? <laughs> upsets me is I am again from the generation where you didn't fool around openly you know what I mean my husband claims before before marriage she had a great sex life which I tend to believe because we'll still be in bed to this day 14 years we'll be in bed right he'll hear a thunder and lightning storm outside he'll sit up and scream I'll buy those negatives <laughs> here we come Long Island Larchmont yeah Hicksville, my parents started there, my post doctor there, yeah. Now I'm from Lodge, I'm Lodge one, which is very strange, all Jews and Catholics. I went, oh, all Jewish Catholic high school, Our Lady Perpetual Guilt, that's where I went. It was just... <laughs> the team cheer was, it could be worse, it could be worse. It was, did you ever go to a Jewish Italian high school? The cheerleaders had more hair, hair on their face than the football team. It was just, oh, and they did not prepare, except, 
I was going to say my high school didn't prepare you for life, but no high schools prepare you for life. Because women today, what we taught, you're taught stupid things. You're taught philosophy, right? What good does philosophy do you once you get married? You can go to the butcher, prove the meat doesn't exist. And it, oh, it's the worst. I was taught calculus. I don't need calculus now to figure out the length of a room. You know how you figure out the length of a room? It is always four inches longer than your vacuum cleaner cord. And, oh, sure. Always. Except I don't cook and I don't clean. Tuffo. Housework is boring and it is stupid. And any woman that does it, you are a fool. A fool, a fool, a fool. Oh, please. Once a month, you want to dust? That's it. Housework is stupid and it is futile because you make the bed, you do the dishes. Six months later, you've got to start all over. Tuck up. Don't cook. If God wanted us to cook, our hands would be aluminum. I am telling you right now. Your husband wants a hot meal, let him sleep with Julia Child. And it, oh, sure. I'm, I do not. I serve ketchup for a vegetable. I am telling you. Sure. Anybody in my house wants breakfast in bed, they have to sleep on the dining room table. And, oh, absolutely. And you know why? Because, again, it goes back to sex again. If he wants a clean house, he should treat me better, don't you think? Isn't that it's a whole thing? Because oh, after all, I'm married, as I told you, 14 years. I, I think, I don't want to talk about it. It depresses me. I think he hates me, okay? He never said so, but for my birthday, he got me a box of Rely tampons. And it's just... <laughs> It was his mother's idea. May she rest in peace. <laughs> Soon. It is uh, a graduate of the Charles Manson School of Charm. Do you get the picture of my mother? My mother never said she hates me, but you can tell. You can tell when they hate you. When they brought in the wedding cake, she bit the head off the bride. They're, oh, yes! And she encourages him to cheat. How many of you really think your husband's cheat? It's exact. Oh, that one honest woman. Exactly. The others are fools like I used to be. Oh, don't trust your husbands. I got into a cab as a joke. I said, where can a girl get a little action in this town? He took me to my husband's office. And, oh, yes. <laughs> took me right away. It was menful. And you know when it goes back? It goes back to, again, the wedding night. From the beginning, he, he was disappointed. Because I have no bazooms. He was very disappointed. I don't want to talk about it. I'm just depressed during this monologue. I came out of the bathroom, took a look at my body. He went into shock. He said, let me help you with the buttons. I said, I am naked. Oh, my wedding night. Oh, he made, oh, ah. Oh. I know I can't tell you it's too tough. He said to me, he said to me, get down your hands and knees, okay? So, <laughs> so I figured, look, what the hell, I'm married, thank God. The check had cleared the whole thing. So I figured it's a real ring. I got down on my hands and knees. I, I can't go on. Don't, don't. Ask me what happened. Well, he stood on my back and changed the light bulb. It was... <laughs> for you to see. This next act has made the people of Gary, Indiana very, very proud because they don't come from there. It is <laughs> Where they do come from is from a smash hit on Broadway where they were hailed by the critics as the brightest man-woman comedy team to come along in 10 years. I think they have done more for humor than Sonny of Cher have done for divorce. Will you please welcome, I think, the best man-woman team since Mike and Elaine, my good friends, John Monteith and Suzanne Rand. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm John Monteith. And I'm Suzanne Rand. And we're really happy to be here with Joan at the Tropicana. Now, we're going to take you to the cockpit of an airplane.
control tower at LaGuardia International Airport. Oh, thank God. What flight number is this, please? Maybe it's flight 1822. 1822? <laughs> from Cincinnati? <laughs> Good to hear from you. Oh. Look, we have got a very large problem. You've got a problem? Yes. What's the nature of your problem? Our pilot's dead. Your pilot's dead? Yes. Is this the co-pilot? No, no, when the pilot died, he put on a parachute and bailed out. <laughs> is this Allegheny Airlines? Oh, yes. All right, who am I speaking to, please? Oh, well, this is your stewardess, Cindy, speaking. Please help me! All right, Cindy, now, don't panic. I'll try not to. Is there anyone there who can fly the airplane? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't want to ask. It might make the passengers nervous. They're on Allegheny. They're already nervous. <laughs> Cindy? Yes? Cindy, can you fly an airplane? Oh, no, no, I, I can't fly a plane. Do you drive an automobile? Uh, no, uh, I, I flunked my test every time I took it. Do you own a hair blow dryer? Oh, yes, yes, I do. All right, it's similar to that. Oh, good, okay, fine. Now, directly in front of you, uh -huh. you should see kind of a half steering wheel looking thing. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, it is directly in front of me. Oh, the co-pilot left that, did he? Uh -huh. Good. Now, that's your steering mechanism. That's how you steer the craft. All right. To the right of that is right. kind of a lever with a knob on top. <laughs> it is. Oh, boy, you know your cockpits. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, that's your automatic pilot. Oh, good. Don't touch that, whatever you do. Um, I, I, I touched it. Oh, no. I, I, I touched it, and I moved it. You're kidding. That means we're gonna die, doesn't it? Not necessarily. That doesn't mean we're all gonna die. No, it doesn't mean that. But it's I'm gonna go down with a bunch of strangers I don't even know, let alone like. That's it, isn't it? No, no, Cindy. Oh, please, Cindy, no, please, don't. I can't die. I, I'm just a stewardess on Crummy Allegheny. I never made it to DWA or anything. Cindy, don't panic. My wings aren't even tarnished yet. Cindy, please, we're depending no, we're on die. you. We're Cindy, gonna die. Cindy, it's all Cindy. Fault. We're all gonna die. We're gonna. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Cindy. Yes? Stop saying we're gonna die. All right. We're not gonna die. All right. At least I'm not gonna die. <laughs> now, Cindy, what? we're going to have you land the airplane. No, 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 I cannot land an airplane. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Have you seen any Doris Day movies? Well, uh, I've seen them all. Then you know this can be done. I'm sorry, I forgot. Now, now, we'll talk it down. All right. It'll be okay. Okay. Now, directly beneath your steering mechanism, there's a little switch that says landing gear. Well, I, I see it. Flick that to down. Down? Okay. Have you done that? Uh-huh. Do you feel kind of a rumbling under your seat? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad, is it? No. <laughs> All right, your wheels should be coming down. Oh, they're on their way. <laughs> Oh, 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 we can see you now. You can see me? We have visual contact. You can really see me? We can see you. Okay, then just tell me what to do. Point your plane in some other direction. What? Do you see that tower coming toward you with all the windows on it? Uh, rapidly, yes, I do. Oh, that's the control tower, uh, I'm aware Cindy. Of that. That's me. Well, well, oh, God, we're gonna die. We're gonna die. No, 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 you won't die. Just tell me what to do. Pull your steering mechanism back toward you. Just sit. Whoa! <laughs> Good move, Cindy. You got some tire tracks on the windows. <laughs> Cindy, you're doing a perfect loop. Press your steering mechanism forward, and the plane will come out of the loop. Good. Very good. Hey, OK. Now we're going to land the plane. No sweat. Do you see the string of blue lights? Roger. That's where we're going to put her down. Press your steering mechanism further forward. OK. A little further no, forward. Wait, the ground's coming up too fast. OK, that's no, right. Bring it, bring it, bring it up. Oh, 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 these damn potholes. Whoa. God, I did it. I, I don't believe it. I, I really did it. I am Doris Day. Cindy. What? Cindy, it's, it's me. 
It's it's Chuck from the control tower. Oh, Chuck, Chuck, Cindy, did it, Cindy, you're Chuck, on the ground. Oh. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Cindy, you're fired. What? Well, I just came back through the rest of the plane. You hadn't put on the no smoking sign. Oh. People have cigarette butts put out in their foreheads. Oh, but, 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 you, I, you didn't tell them to fasten their seatbelts. Everybody's in first class. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. right next to Truman Capote. <laughs> Actually, the reason I'm in this is because in the next number, I am gonna dance the can-can. Our choreographer, Jerry Jackson, said it was all right. Right, Jerry? What? That I can dance the can-can, it's all right, right? <gasps> well, Tuffo, despite what he thinks, I happen to be a fabulous dancer. And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, and probably the last on television, I am going to dance the can-can. What you are about to see is not for the squeamish. Oh, get me up, I oh. beg you. 
Oh, oh, thank God. Did I have the baby? Oh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, will you help me thank one more time the Tropicana dancers? They're just incredible. They were bright, and most of all, will you let me thank you because you were a terrific audience? Thank you for coming. Have a lovely evening. The following film has been rated R restricted by the Motion Picture Industries rating system. Showtime recommends that children under 17 view this picture in the company of an adult. <laughs>